So I've had quite a few people asking us for information on tuning the 1.6 TDI engine from the Volkswagen Audi group. It's an interesting engine. They wanted to create a fairly small diesel efficient engine that they could fit in the smaller bodied car. And they came up with the 1.6 TDI, which has a brilliant fan base. But when it comes to tuning and upgrading them, there's not actually that much information out there. So in this video, we're going to look at the best mods and upgrades that you can do to your 1.6 TDI. Uh, we'll just discuss the merits, the pros, and the cons of each of these mods just to make sure that you can get the best out of your car. <laughs> With any diesel engine, the whole aim of tuning it is to get it to burn more air and more fuel. And if you can get it to do that, you will make more power. But getting it to do that really requires a couple of things to focus on. And the first really is the computer of the car, just to make sure that is set up correctly. The turbo itself is another major component in the engine. So when it comes to adding some serious power to your 1.6 TDI, you really need to think about upgrading the turbo because that's the pump that's pushing all of that oxygen laden air into the engine. So there's a few hybrids available where they've taken the standard 1.6 TDI turbo unit and they've changed the internals to give a better profile. It spools up more quickly and it gives you a higher peak power band as well. So there's a decent Garrett turbo upgrade for the 1.6 TDI and there's also a Borg Warner KKK turbo upgrade that is proved to be quite popular and quite effective on the 1.6 TDI projects. So with those simple upgrades you can expect to take your power to a fairly easy 170 brake horsepower which will feel very very quick in the typical car that the 1.6 TDI was actually fitted to. There's also some much more aggressive turbo kits that you can get that really do enhance the power. We've got to mention Dark Side Developments. They've done some great work on the 1.6 TDI. They've not paid us to say that. We've had lots of feedback from our members and from people that visit this channel and they do the GTD 1752 VK Turbo in a kit form that is designed for the 1.6 TDI engine. So to fit that you would typically need to remove the EGR cooler so you would also need to get around the EGR system that have come installed on a lot of the 1.6 TDI engine and you'd also expect to need to increase the fueling of the engine as well it certainly would need a better supply of fuel than the standard setup if you're running one of these more aggressive turbo setup but we're going to discuss fueling upgrades in this video as well so the 1.6 TDI engine typically have power figures of about 110 horsepower with 180 pound foot of torque and it seems like the maximum ceiling limit for the 1.6 TDI engine on stock internal is around about the 220 to 250 horsepower but as most of these cars they were fitted to was front wheel drive you're going to struggle with traction issues if you take the power beyond those levels so I think 200 is a sensible upper target for people that want a fairly aggressive project and most people actually settle and be quite happy with power figures of about 150 160 horsepower on their 1.6 TDI. So the intercooler is an important component because the turbocharger itself is compressing the air. It's adding a lot of heat to that air chart. And as we know, hot air carries less oxygen and you need that oxygen mated to the diesel fuel in order to get it to burn. So with intercooler upgrades, what you're doing is getting the car to resist heat soak. Now heat soak is where the intercooler itself warms up to the point it becomes less efficient at taking those intake temperatures back down. So don't think of an intercooler as adding power, but there's something that will enable you to hitting the power figures that your engine is capable of producing for longer periods of time resisting the heat soak. So there's the Wagner or the Wagner tuning competition gen 2 intercooler kit. But when it comes to upgrading intercoolers and turbochargers, a lot of people are still looking within the Volkswagen Audi group and they're looking at components that we used on the slightly larger 2 litre TDI and in a lot of cases those are relatively simple to retrofit to your 1.6 TDI. So have a look at the forums, have a look online, there's a lot of information about these but rather than going out and buying the new turbo or the intercooler kit there may be cheaper options available at your local breakers yard just using components that Volkswagen Audi Group have already used. So it's nice, isn't it, to just go out and buy something that will make decent power fairly cheaply. If you've got some experience of these simple mods from Breakers Yards where you've got parts from other components from a Volkswagen Audi Group vehicle, please drop a note in the comments. I'd love to hear your experiences 
What turbos fit? Have you got the 3 litre TDI turbo, the 2.5 TDI turbo in your 1.6? Did it create a lot more lag at the bottom end? Which I expect it probably would, although it's likely to help you to hit those higher power figures. So one of the most popular mods that people do to a car is generally an induction kit. And it's not necessarily popular because it adds loads of power. It's just a really easy mod to do. You just take off the air filter and replace it with the induction kit. Now, a couple of things to bear in mind. Firstly, on the diesel engine, it doesn't add very much power at all. You're aiming to remove a restriction in the intake. So if you've made substantially more power than the factory designed intake system is capable of handling, you may well be experiencing a restriction. So you'll effectively be down on power. So an induction kit will certainly help. But bear in mind with the induction kit, if it's sighted in the engine bay and it's sucking all that warm engine bay air into the intake, you're losing some power because that warmer air is carrying less oxygen. So always combine your induction kit with a cold air feed taking fresh air from the outside of the engine. So it is quite easy usually to sight some pipe work just to vent a little bit of fresh air, but be careful where you sight that. You certainly don't want to be sucking water up off the road into the engine because that's going to give you a whole host of problems. So pop your induction kit that have been used on the 1.6 TDI or obviously K&N, a big name in induction kit. It's the racing power company and grim speed but depending on your location there's probably some brands there that you've got access to that i don't even know about here in the uk so drop a note in the comments and let me know what your experience has been with induction kits and did you feel that the induction kit on your 1.6 tdi improved the engine intake raw noise that you would get or did it just make things louder and more unpleasant. So with the exhaust system on your 1.6 TDI, you want that exhaust to allow those exhaust gases to exit the engine as cleanly as possible. And the faster velocity you can get along the exhaust, the better the scavenging effect. So it's going to help to empty the cylinders and create a partial vacuum in the cylinders so you'll get a little bit more air in on the intake chart. Again, like with induction kits, an exhaust system will just remove a restriction and most people will not have a restriction on a standard engine. If you just changed an induction kit and a sports exhaust on a standard 1.6 TDI, you will notice very little extra power on the dyno. And in fact, you might even notice a little bit of less low end power just because the velocity of the exhaust gases and the intake charge is somewhat lower than it would be at those lower RPM figures, but it's going to be optimized at the upper end. So effectively, you're just moving the power band up slightly. And in everyday driving, that's probably not a characteristic you want. You want as much torque and low end power as possible. In reality, Adding the sports exhaust in the induction kit on your 1.6 TDI shouldn't harm performance. It might make things more pleasant and enjoyable as a driver, but I've never been impressed with sports exhausts on diesel engines. I prefer a diesel engine to be as quiet as possible. Just the nature of the diesel engine, the way it works, I just feel that magnifying those sounds, it makes it sound a lot more agricultural. And personally, that's not something for me. But let me know in the comments what you think of the exhaust systems available on the 1.6 TDI and whether you feel it's made a difference to the exhaust note that has made you proud to be a 1.6 TDI owner, whereas before you maybe you were a little bit embarrassed by it. So again, Dark Side Developments have got some really nice aftermarket exhaust systems designed for the 1.6 engine to maximize the way the turbo spools up and get those gases out of the engine possible. You've got the EGR system, which can clog things up and a, a DPF filter on some models. So we've got other videos discussing those and whether you should remove them and looking at the legalities of removing those and replacing them. There's the AFE Mac Force XP 304SS exhaust muffler, which a lot of people really rate and recommend. So try and find a video of that exhaust in operation and have a listen to the sound of it and see if you like that particular exhaust note. And there's also the very popular baller exhaust. So again, that's just a silencer. It's got a nice shape and a lot of people go for the stainless steel gray round muffler. It looks nice on most of the models the 1.6 TDI engine was fitted to. So what's the big thing? the easy thing you can do to your 1.6 TDI to make substantially more power and just improve the enjoyment that you have of driving your car. Well, it's by far and away a remap. So a remap is where you take the engine's control unit, the ECU, and you change the program in it. So the program in it is controlling the fuel delivery and the timing of that. And it's also controlling the turbo and the way the air gets into the engine. So the ECU is making a lot of calculations based on the load, the conditions you're driving in, the air temperature, the intake temperature, and it's factoring all of those in to create a performance profile. Now, Volkswagen Audi Group have set this up to work in a variety of climates on a variety of different grades of fuel. So by 
getting the ECU changed and tuned, you can set your 1.6 TDI up to perform at its very best in your local area. And I really do recommend if you can get your 1.6 TDI set up on a rolling road. And that way they can take into account all the other mods you've done and the exact nuances and idiosyncrasies of your specific engine and specific setup. Because two 1.6 TDI engines coming off the factory production line will not necessarily make exactly the same power. There's going to be some variance in the manufacturing of components that have been used within it. So what sort of power of gains can you expect from a remap on your 1.6 TDI? So most companies have got a couple of options. One is an economy map that is optimized to improve the fuel efficiency of the engine. And you will still see about 25 to 30 horsepower more power on the economy map. So that will make a significant difference to the engine's performance, you'll get better fuel economy and it won't adversely affect the engine's reliability. But I would still recommend with any kind of tuning project, you shorten the service intervals and just make sure you're looking after that engine, which is working harder than it would have done when the factory first designed it and they set up the service schedule for it. And make sure you use good quality oils and good quality components in that service as well. Going for an out and out performance map, you can increase the power from the 30 horsepower up to about 50 horsepower fairly easily now, just by changing the software and the way the engine works. So with a diesel engine, the primary aim is to get the diesel fuel to go into the engine in the greater quantities and to create a very, very efficient burn. And the stock fuel system is pretty good on the 1.6 TDI. It can handle power figures up to about 200 horsepower. And at that point, it's going to start to struggle to deliver the fuel that you need. And bear in mind that some older 1.6 six TDI edges may even start struggling below the 200 horsepower mark. So factor that in when you're looking at your tuning project, look at the efficiency of those injectors and always specify a fuel pump and an injector system that exceeds the engine's requirement by about 20%, just to give yourself a little bit of headroom to play with. So the injectors are the critical component that creates the mist of fuel. And the more effective they are at creating a mist of diesel fuel, the more power you'll make, the more efficient the engine will actually work. So you can get upgrades to the standard factory injectors, which have basically just been retooled and redesigned to create more preferable flow characteristics. Obviously manufacturers have pushed the car out at a price point and they're not going to use the highest quality components or the absolute top notch performance designs. So a lot can be improved upon in the aftermarket and there's certainly some options around for you. But you can also get some decent aftermarket nozzles and injectors set up. You've got Bosio or Pierre Berg nozzles. Now the pronunciation is probably wrong on those. So let me know in the comments if I've got that wrong. I've got terrible local accents so those of you that live a long way away from me are probably even struggling to understand. So again, Darkside Developments, a local company in the UK, have cropped up in my research and they've got some really good injectors that have been designed, plus 50% common rail injectors that they do. You can find the part numbers on their website, but don't just think you can bolt on better injectors and better fuel pumps to expect more power. You really do need to make adjustments in the ECU. If the spray pattern is different or the amount of fuel being delivered is different, the ECU is going to be getting its calculations and predictions wrong. And you'll probably just end up with flat spots or maybe even error code where the engine runs into its limp home mode to protect itself. So I hope you found this video interesting. We've got more stuff coming up on the 1.6 TDI. So we would love you to stay tuned. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. Let me know in the comments what car you've got what model it is and if you've done any mods i really love hearing what people have done to their projects and it just helps everyone to broaden their appreciation of this fantastic little engine and get to grips with what it's got to offer and i'll see you in the next video